this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this very pretty red wine glass. It's a 20 ounce wine glass. And this is more very simple hand painted glass. As you know, my channel really is dedicated towards giving you easy patterns to paint so that you can try it on your own do your own or if you're not wanting to do that you can also buy mine so if you're new to my channel make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you like the video once it's over give me a big thumbs up share this with all your friends and family that helps me grow my channel and I'd appreciate that and we're going to go ahead and get started alright I've already cleaned my wine glass and that's very important that you clean you know with soap and water or if anything you at least wipe it off with rubbing alcohol make sure that it's clean when you get started that'll help the paint adhere to the glass the paint brush I'm using today is just a single number 12 Royal Aqualon filbert brush and so just very cheap to do since you only need to have one brush I am going to be using the glitter gold paint it's the folk art enamels it's the gold glitter which I love it gives a nice little glitter to your glassware even if you just want to use it on its own pure orange which is also folk art enamel all my paints are folk art love folk art and then the gold enamel which is their metallic gold that's also um, enamel not uh, not the multi surface and then I'm going to be using the wicker white notice I've got orange on my hand so I, hopefully I just painted my design so hopefully I didn't take any of that off and then copper which is a multi surface I'm basically trying to switch over to the multi surface so I can use it on anything but I do love certain colors so I'll mix them up you know if they're enamel or vice versa Alright, so this is the autumn leaf, which is the enamel, and then the final one is crushed coral. Now with this design, again, it's very simple. If you feel like you want to do a variation and maybe switch it up and use different size filberts, that's fine. I'm just sticking with the one, and I, you know, I'm happy with the design, how it turned out. First time I've painted one like this, so I like it. I think it's very fun and festive. The first color I'm going to start off with is the pure orange. Now, I like my paint to be opaque, so with the starter of this, I found out that I really kind of needed to mix it a little bit with the wicker white in order to um, get the consistency that I wanted. So I'm basically just going to start off and go around the glass and just pull the design around. Now you can do this a number of ways. This one I just happened to just do at different, different heights around the glass. And I'm kind of pulling up from the top of the stem just to make where it's ending up here have a nice finish too. And I'm just, like I said, just going to rotate the glass and just go around, pulling this design down, up and down, around the glass. And I'm going to keep adding paint as I go. The wicker white actually just helps make it more opaque looking. And then as you get down in your painting, the different designs you need because I keep painting this is not the first time or the last time you're going to see this color basically because I do it and then just keep painting it and painting it and re, you know switching the colors as I go with the glass even though this is an easy pattern to paint it can be a little time consuming because I do a lot of layers Again, very just a very fun, and I I kind of feel like it's abstract. It's not my typical floral glass painting. 
although it kind of resembles a flower, but it's not really meant to. And you could also do this with different brushes, you know, flat brushes, angle brushes, round brushes. They get a different, a different result. And the painted wine glasses actually just are perfect gifts. If you ever wanted something that was a nice touch, something people, especially if they're wine drinkers or any wine lovers out there, if you have anybody like that that you're friends with, or maybe you get a Christmas list and that's the person you're, you've got to gift something to, hey, go buy a paintbrush, a few colors of paint, and have at it. You know, just go to it. All right. Now, in between each of these coats to start off with, I am going to be cleaning my brush and blood, or using my heat gun. So you can either, I mean, you can continue painting on this without doing that. I just think your paint's going to get kind of muddled. But either hit it with the hair dryer or if you have a heat gun, you know, hit it with that. Now the next one I'm doing is the copper, and I also found this to be kind of opaque, but I, I really don't want it to be, I don't know, I guess I'm, I am mixing it kind of with a lot of white. But you can also go over it and just keep in mind that I will be adding copper more than once. I'm trying to make sure I don't put these all at the same level. I can go over it more with this. And I'm just using light touches too. I'm not pressing real hard because I know some people have a tendency to have a hard time with their pressure that they're doing on the glass and they feel like their paint isn't isn't staying on. Don't really have to press real hard. Glass painting, actually that's one thing I like about it is the fact that the paint flows so nicely on it. Like some surfaces that you paint on, the paint may be kind of stiff or stick and not flow when you're trying to do certain strokes. If you're not doing stroke work, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I'm not really sure. And like I guess it does these don't have to be perfect strokes, as you see. I'm not doing perfect strokes. And there's so many variations you can do with this. This, because I thought about it as I was painting my design. Because again, this is the first time I've done this, so I was painting the design, and I, as I'm painting, and I think, oh, you know, I should have done this. I should have done that. But you know, do different variations of it. And if while you're watching this, you come up with something different. You know, give me a comment down below. How would you have done this differently? You know, it's all nice when we're creatives that we can share with each other. You know, we all have different ideas and different ways we would do stuff. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. So keep that in mind too. Somebody's giving criticism. Hopefully, it's constructive. But to you know, we are not all the same, and we look at things differently. You know, an inspiration that I may have from something, and do a, a technique one way. You might look at the same piece and think, "Oh, well, I don't see that. I would have done it this way," and that's fine. That's what it's all about having your own creative mind. And to me it's having your own mind. I definitely feel that's important to have your own thoughts. But like I said, this is just more of a time consuming piece. It's definitely not rocket science by any means.
Now if I were painting this as a set, and keep in mind I just, this is the first time I've done this design as I mentioned, I would actually be doing each level, like say the first color I did, the pure orange, I would do all that on this glass and then I'd go to the next glass and do it all on that glass and then just keep creating as you know each each step I would do that on each glass that I'm painting for you know, if I'm doing a custom order or trying to get them to look very similar I would that's how I would do it because I feel like if you're creating a piece or pieces at the same time in the same manner if you're doing it at the same time it's going to be created more like the each other than if you were to do it now and then a month later do add to it I really hate when somebody does that with a custom order you know I need to I want to add another one to that piece and it's just like oh I don't know if it's gonna look the same or if it's the same shade or whatnot all right I'm gonna hit this again with the heat gun all right so I've hit this with the heat gun and then I'm moving on to my next color so I'm gonna pull this one up here and then just keep moving around again I'm still trying to keep a nice look at the base as nice as possible it doesn't have to be because I will finish it off will finish it if you would comment down below what is your favorite glass paint if you are a glass painter what do you prefer and I recommend if you're new to glass painting there's so many and then I find out with some of my videos that I've done well they don't make that kind anymore well I've had it forever and using it as part of my video had no idea that it was no longer carried which is funny because so many people liked it but that's how it goes but anyways let me know you know what your experiences have been and what you find to be the best I definitely recommend as I was starting to say that you try different brands because depending on your technique that may designate what works best for you as far as the brand of paint. If you like more of a stained glass look, there are different paints out there that will give you that. This one is not one I would recommend for a stained glass look, but your PBO or PBO, however you say it correctly, those have a tendency you know, to be a good product that would give you that look. All right. Once again, going to hit it with the dryer. All right, so then the next one I'm going to hit it with, I'm going to do my glitter gold and then just come in here. See, it's just very, just very nondescript. It's just, it's there, but I'm just trying to add a little bit of shimmer into the glass. I keep in mind too. This glass is not necessarily going to be beautiful on the inside when you're painting a design like this unless you truly do allow it to sit and dry or you know, get it to really dry nicely in between coats because the paint when you're painting like this will, will lift some. Even though I am hitting it with a heat gun. And that's one reason too you should work on having a light pressure so you don't lift it too much and I mean I don't know if you can see down in here where I've lifted some of the color that I had painted initially over the top of the original orange that I painted and then you can't really tell it too much on the inside you can on this one see how there's a difference there so eventually this one might get that way I'm not sure like I said they're all different but I like the glitter and you will see this again. Like I said, you know, I thought about this while I was painting them. 
It's like, gosh, you know, I could have just done one color, one height, all the way around, the next color, the next height, and so on, creating a neat look that way too. But I didn't do it that way, so you get this variation. All right, gonna hit it again with the heat gun. All right, got that done. Now, obviously with the thicker paint, it's the heat gun's not going to dry that. All right, so I'm going to be using my, I think it's Autumn, Autumn Leaves, yes. So I always forget the names of the paints. And I start renaming them my own, own names. And remember, I don't want these all the same height. So if you do a different variation, I'd love to see it. If you're able to share a picture with me, or contact me and I'll give you a way to share a picture. Let me go up here. If you have any suggestions on different variations of this class design, please put it in the comments below. So I would love to hear from you. I'm going to come up here a little ways. I feel like we need a, another high one. And then another low one. And you could spread these out. And they don't all have to be right next to each other. Like leave more space in between. Which would be fine. Alright, guess what I'm going to do now? Hit it with the heat gun. Alright, so hit, hit it with the heat gun. Now I'm going to start my rotation again with the original color. Which is the, uh, the is it pure orange? Yes, pure orange. All right. So now on this one, when I meant you could spread them out a little bit more, is not. I'm not going to necessarily bring a stroke right down here. I'm going to spread it out and leave a space here. And see, here's here's an example of it lifting. Even though I'm drying it, but I'm putting a lot of coats of paint on this. Which, by the way, what will that what will that help? If you know, put a comment below. If you know about the thickness of the paint, what does that help with? Just curious to see if you've watched my videos before, if you know. If you're paying attention. All right. And see with this now, the, the pure orange, I don't really have to mix in any of the white or too much of that because I'm painting over the top of other paint now. So it's more, it's opaque, you know, it's covering well. Like I said, the wicker white just helps, helps with coverage. Also too, if you're doing designs like, you know, with the one stroke, it's a nice, a nice second color to, to mix with other colors. All right. So see inside there, it's starting to, you know, you're starting to see where some of the paint is lifted. Again, allowing more drying time in between is going to help with that. But I'm just going to hit it with the heat gun again, and we'll continue. All right. So my next color that I'm going to add, and I'm trying to remember to keep these in the same order, is the copper. And once again, too, on this, I'm just going to spread them a little bit so they're not, not all to, right together. Here we go. I'm going to thin that out a little bit. So you can keep going over your strokes a little bit. You know, if you need to 
tidy them up a little bit. That's fine. But once again, I think it's, you know, such a pretty, pretty, pretty design. I just really wouldn't have even thought of it, but I did get an inspiration by something I saw, and I thought, oh, that would be kind of neat. And, of course, my take on it is different than what I saw, and that's what you do with inspirations. You put your own twist on them. I guess that even with this design, you might paint it so differently than I'm painting it, that's fine. That's what you do. You get inspiration from other people or pictures or whatnot, and then you put your own twist to it. That is the way to do it. All right, so I'm going to leave it with the copper like that. And all right, so we got that on. Now the next one we're going to go back into, let's forget this one, crushed coral is what it's called. All right, so doing the same thing, you know, I might pull it up here a little bit. Kind of spread it some too, you just want to keep it, because now, you know, we really want these layers to start really showing. I mean, you can still see them up there, but, yes, we're painting, oh, see, I put that one too close. Wasn't thinking. I'll move this one over. That's okay. It will be fine. It will be fine. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. All right, then my next thing I'm going to put on here again is some more of the shimmery gold and see how it's kind of chalky or milky looking and then as it's drying it, you see more of the the gold showing out. Now this one because of, of the nature of the color I'm going to actually do this closer together because it's not really what I would say a color per se you will see the underneath, whatever it's on top of, more so. I just like the shimmer. I don't know why that is. I must have gotten that from my mother. I don't know what I got there. Okay. All right. Hitting it with the heat gun again. All right. See how shimmery that makes it? I just love it. All right. So then... I'm going to go back over it with the autumn leaves and still trying to do oh, this one. I got to remember not to be too close together. But I will be continuing to paint these colors on, so you'll see here in a minute. I really don't want that down here that much. So at this point you can still scrape the paint off if it's coming down more than what you really wanted it to. And actually I think I'm going to stop right there with this one. Alright, heat gun. Alright, now the fun begins because now I'm going to finish this off by <clears throat> going around the bottom with all the colors. So i am got this, this is the pure orange and I'm just going to turn it give it some space and then turn it again add it I'm not even cleaning my brush off in between these I might want to add that here not even cleaning the brush not drying it in between or anything just adding the color and this is trying to give it some space in between each of them Give them some space. Give it a little bit of space. Just got to remember. Space it out. Alright, I'm going to stop with that. Just wiping my brush off. Move into the next color. I'll do the same with it. Now the 
this one I put too, too close together, but that's okay. It's all right. It doesn't have to be a certain measurement. And then add some glitter. I guess probably the hardest part of this project is remembering the color order. Because I'm dealing with so many colors. And you could do different color schemes. You know, hit it up with purples or um, whites. I think this would be actually a pretty toasting glass for a wedding. It could be very pretty. Done in maybe whites and golds, whites and silver. You know, however you want to mix it up. I just want to make sure, yeah, then I just keep keep kind of hitting it after this. Just come down into the base a little bit. The shorter strokes. All right. Again, just going to hit it again. This, the smaller strokes. You can see, and you know, really, as I'm painting it, you're probably thinking, God, you can't see a lot of this. Well, you end up, you do. You see quite a bit of it. And I think the color with the layering and all that, it, it's, it, it turns out fine. I think, at least. And last, one last color. Just kind of turning it and putting it on there. And I think that's it for that. Now to finish this up, I just took my metallic gold with the, with the little lid. I like to do a little starter before I do it on my project. And then I'm just going to go around this and then just finish off the base of it. You could do the stem, I and mean, I thought about doing like a funky colored stem with all the different colors, and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep it simple. I don't want it to look like a clown glass either. I don't think it's just too much. I don't want to do that. So, this is just a very subtle way to finish it off and still give it a pretty finish. And I thought, too, another thing you could do if you wanted to find... You, know, you could go and just whimsically outline some of the the top ones or just sporadically throughout the glass even. So there's like so many different things you could do with this design. But I think just leaving it like this, actually, you know, I'm looking at this, this would be pretty hot, pretty glasses for the fall even. I didn't even think about that when I was picking the colors. Alright, so that's that's it. Easy peasy. Um, hope it's something that you liked. Again. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell, which I think I forgot to mention. That way you get notifi notified whenever I submit something new. And make sure that you hit the thumbs up if you like this video. And hit the share that's underneath this video. Share it with your friends and family. Help me grow my channel. And make sure that when you're done with your glasses, you do allow them to air dry for an hour if you're using the folk art paints. If you're not, then you need to make sure you're following the manufacturer's guidelines that they print on the bottles because they're all different. Put these glass and put these glasses in a cold oven, turn the oven on then, preheat it. I always add my preheat time to my bake time, so my oven takes about 20 minutes to preheat. This particular paint takes 30 minutes at 350 degrees to bake so my oven is on for 50 minutes turn it off allow it to cool completely and then I pull the glasses out I do also add a coat of the Mod Podge dishwasher safe gloss it just gives it some added protection you don't have to you don't have to prime the glasses you just have to make sure they're clean you don't have to add any protection afterwards but for durability's sake, I just do it as a precaution. Also, 
whenever you're doing hand painted glass or if you buy hand painted glass even though it may be dishwasher safe if you do choose to put it in the dishwasher top rack only if you have a commercial grade dishwasher or a very high heat dishwasher I would recommend hand I recommend hand washing period but I would definitely re recommend in those cases to hand wash. Never, never, never put it in the bottom rack of a dishwasher because your paint will come off. Don't let this glassware sit in water. That will loosen up the paint. Handle it like fine china and guess what? You'll enjoy it for years to come. Until my next video, have a good one.